Hey guys, Josh here and welcome back to Rune Factory 5 and this video is part 1 of my farming guide where I explain all of the farming mechanics in Rune Factory 5. So this was originally supposed to be just one video but it ended up being one hour long and there was just way too much information so I will split it in different parts. So this is part 1 and I will explain all of the different stats for your soil as well as the nutrients you can use. Then in part 2 I will explain the different farm dragons and their crystals. And in part 3 I'll give you lots of little tips and things that couldn't fit in the first two parts. But hopefully by the end of these videos you will be an expert on farming in Rune Factory 5. I know it can be very confusing, very overwhelming, so I'll do my best to explain things as clearly as possible. And also if you have any questions or if there's anything I forget to mention, please let me know in the comments and I'll keep an eye on the comments and try to respond. So with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's start talking about the stats. And the first thing you'll need if you want to understand anything about farming in Run Factory 5, you need to be able to see these stats. And this is done with the magnifying glass, which you can buy from the beginning of the game at the general store. And when you equip the magnifying glass, you're gonna get this purple box which has lots of numbers. Once again, it's very confusing, but we'll explain everything one by one. And at first you might find it a little bit annoying always having to switch between your magnifying glass and for example, your watering can or your other tools. But there's a solution to that. I know I mentioned this in previous videos, but this video is mostly for beginners. So I'll explain it one more time in case you have not watched the other videos. So you can actually use the magnifying glass as an ingredient to upgrade your equipment. And this will give your piece of equipment the effect of the magnifying glass. So we'll start by adding it to a tool. So if you have an anvil, you just select upgrade a weapon and I'll use my watering can. So you just add the tool you'd like to upgrade and then you add the magnifying glass. And it only costs 10 RP, so you can do this from the very beginning of the game. And as you can see now, my watering can is giving me all of the information that the magnifying glass gives. So that is very convenient, but you can actually do something even more convenient and that's upgrading a piece of armor or accessory. And I didn't know you could do this until very recently actually. So you need to have a crafting table and then you select upgrade armor. So you just select any piece of armor that you're gonna wear. You add the magnifying glass. And now the good thing is no matter what I have in my hands, whether it's a weapon or any tool, like even like the fishing rod or even if I have a bag of seeds, as long as I have something in my hand, just because I'm wearing that ribbon that was upgraded with the magnifying glass, I'm always gonna see the stats. So no matter how you do it, whether you just want to use a magnifying glass, you want to upgrade your tool or upgrade some piece of armor, you're going to need to see these stats if you want to understand anything about farming. So now we can start talking about these stats. So that purple box where you can see the stats is basically divided into two main sections. So there's the top part where you can see crop level, growth rate, HP and number or NO. And these are the stats related to the crops. So each individual crop will have their own stats there. And if you go where there's nothing planted, the stats are gonna be empty. And then you've got the bottom part from overall soil all the way down to health and damage resist. And that's the stats of the soil. And the soil is divided by little two by two plots. So each little plots of four tiles will share the same stats. So that's the first thing you should know. Some stats are for the crops and some stats are for the soil. So we'll start from the top and go through each stat one by one. Some of them are more obvious than others, but we're gonna start with crop level. Actually, before we do crop level, I just wanna point out that when you aim at a crop, you can actually see the name of the crop at the very top of the screen. So all of the seeds look similar and sometimes it can be hard to remember what you planted. And that seems very obvious, but most of the time when I stream this game, there's always people asking me if there's a way to see the name of the crop. So yeah, you just need to look at the top of the screen. So okay, now let's talk about the crop level. So crop level ranges from level one to level 10. At the beginning of the game, all of the seeds you'll get will be level one. Typically when you plant a seed, you will get a crop of the same level. So for example, here I've got level three cucumber seeds. So if I plant it, I'm gonna get a level three cucumber. And there are a few ways to get higher level seeds. So sometimes simply by harvesting a crop, you will get some seeds. If you harvest level one crops, there's a chance you'll get level two seeds. 
and if you harvest level 2 crops, there's a chance you'll get level 3 seeds. However, starting from level 3 when you harvest the crops, you will always get seeds of the same level. So to go higher than level 3, you're gonna need to use a sickle. So for example, here you can see I've got a green pepper, it's a level 7 green pepper. So I'm gonna grab the seeds and I got level 8 green pepper seeds. So that's how you can go all the way up to level 10. However, one thing to keep in mind is that for higher level seeds, you will need a better sickle. So the cheap sickle will allow you to get better seeds from level 1 and level 2 crops. The iron sickle will allow you to get better seeds from level 3 and 4. The quality sickle will allow you to get better seeds from level 5 crops. Love Sickle for level 6 and 7, and Legendary Sickle for level 8 and 9. So if one day you're trying to get a high level seed from a crop and you're just getting a seed of the same level, it means that you need a better sickle. There is also another way to have higher level crops, and that's with the Quality Plus stat, so we're gonna check that one in detail a bit later. But if the Quality Plus stat is high enough, over time it is possible that the crop will level up. So as an example, I have an orange tree right here. And I actually planted a level 1 orange tree seed, but as you can see the quality right now is at 0.19 and I've had this tree for a while. And you can see it's now level 2 and the level shows in blue because it's a different level than the seed that I planted. And it's gonna give me level 2 oranges. And also after selling a seed or a crop of a certain level in the shipping bin, the store will then start selling seeds of that level. So I'm gonna sell my level 8 green pepper seeds and then the next day the general store will start selling the level 8 seeds. So that is pretty much it for the crop level. Now let's talk about the growth rate. So this one is pretty straightforward. It ranges from 0% all the way up to 100%. So when you plant a seed it's gonna be at 0 and when a crop is ready to harvest it will be at 100%. And this is determined by the grow speed stat as well as the season. So in Rune Factory 5 you can plant all of the crops in all seasons. However, some of them will have seasons where they grow faster and seasons where they grow slower. So for example, the cucumber right here usually takes 5 days to grow. However, in spring and summer it will grow faster. Autumn is not mentioned, so it will take 5 days. And winter, it doesn't grow well, so it will take a little bit more than 5 days. And that's assuming that the growth speed is at 1.0. So if your growth speed is under or over, this will affect the time. But yeah, that's pretty much it for growth rate. Next, we've got HP, not to be confused with health, which is the health of the soil. To remember it, I think of HP as health plant. So I know it's really just for the plant itself, it's not the soil. So each type of crop will have a different number for their base HP. So for example, we're gonna plant one cucumber here. Let's plant another one. And as you can see, the health for a cucumber is 95. So anytime you plant a cucumber, no matter the level of the cucumber, their base HP is always gonna start at 95. And if I plant a yam here, for example, and I look at it, the HP is 140. So if you're wondering why some crops have higher HP than other to start with, it's just because every type of crop is different. However, if I look at my other cucumber that's right here, you can see that the HP is at 38. And you're probably wondering why it's no longer at 95. And that's because HP will go down a little bit every day. And you don't want it to go to zero because once it goes at zero, Let's take a look at this pumpkin right here. You can see that this pumpkin is wilting and if it stays wilted overnight, it will simply die. So one thing you can do, you can water it. So if I water it, it will survive until tomorrow, but then tomorrow it's gonna wilt again. And if they wilt, the number stat will go down. So as you can see this one, the number shows two and it's in red. Whereas usually pumpkins are at three, which is their base yield. So we're gonna take a closer look at that stat in a minute. And also that pumpkin actually lost a level because it was actually level 10 seed, but it currently shows crop level nine. I think it should be in red. I'm not sure why it's shown in blue. I think that might be a bug, but that was actually a level 10 seed, but it lost a level because the HP went to zero and it wilted. So one very easy and cheap way to recover HP of your crops is by using these withered grass, which are gonna spawn all around your farm and you can just drop them on a plot. So they're gonna recover these four tiles and you just need to use the hoe. So right now the HP is at six and you just till the withered grass like this with your hoe. And now the HP went back to 31. 
so it gave 25 HP, but something a little bit more effective would be the four leaf clover as well as the corn. So I'm just going to use one of each so you can see how much of a boost they give. And they actually both do the same exact things. So now we went from 31 to 116. So that's 85 points. And with the corn right here, this one also gives 85 points. So we're at 201. And the maximum HP for our crop is 255. So even our cucumbers that we planted yesterday, they started at 95. But if I were to use some four leaf clovers or withered grass or corn on them, I could bring them all the way up to 255. And as you can see, they lost a little bit of HP from yesterday. So they're now at 89. So just keep an eye on the HP of your crops. Make sure it doesn't go down too low. And also there is a nutrient that prevents wilting. It's not 100%, uh, but there's no rot alpha and no rot beta, which is a little bit more effective. Unfortunately, the risk of wilting is kind of a hidden stat. You don't really see it. So when you use that nutrient, it reduces the chances of wilting, but you don't really know for sure at 100%. I personally never use these nutrients. What I would recommend doing is simply making sure you water all of your crops every day and make sure their HP remains high and they're not gonna wilt. All right, next, let's talk about number or NO. And this is the number of crops that each harvest will yield. So for example, this turnip, it says two. So this gives me two turnips. This one says three, so it gives me three. So if the number is in white, that's the default one. If it's in blue, it means it's gonna give you more. And if it's in red, it's gonna give you less. So for example, these pumpkins just gave me two instead of the usual three. So that number is determined, of course, by the type of crop that you plant and also by the number plus stat. And if you ever get a yield that is different from that number stat, for example, if it says number three, but you actually get four or five, or if you get less, I would recommend checking out with Livia for the harvest report. So every week she will tell you which harvest will be more bountiful and which one will not be very good. So if she tells you, for example, that on one week the harvest is really good for potatoes, even if potatoes says number three, when you harvest your potatoes, you might get four or five. So just keep that in mind if you ever get something that's different from the number stat. So that's it for the stats of the actual crops. Now let's talk about the soil stats. So this part is also kind of divided into two. So first you've got the levels. So there's overall soil level, speed level, quality level, size level, and number levels. And then you've got stats corresponding to each one of these levels. So overall soil level will influence health and damage resist. Speed level will influence growth speed, quality level, quality plus, size level, size plus, number level, number plus. All of these levels range from level 1 to level 16. And the way to increase them is simply by harvesting crops. So for example, let's take a look at this plot right here. So overall soil level is at 590, speed 156, quality 254, size 328, and number 150. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this and I'm going to harvest these pumpkins and just look away and look at it again. I'm going to take a screenshot and let's compare how the numbers change. So the overall soil level went from 590 to 604. Speed didn't change. Quality went from 254 to 255. Size from 328 to 334 and number didn't change. And that's because each type of crop will boost different stats. So let's just compare with one more type of crop. For example, I've got strawberries here. So let's harvest them and take a look at our soil one more time. So soil level went up, speed went up, quality went up, size and number. Actually with the strawberries, all of the stats went up. So really every crop is different and I'm gonna be putting a link in the description to a table with all of these stats and that table is actually from Run Factory 4 but most of the numbers are pretty similar. So you can have it as a reference if you're looking to boost a specific level for your soil, you can know which type of crop to plant. But as you saw, the strawberries are really good because they will improve everything. And for each level that you gain, the base stats will go up. But let's just go through things one by one and talk about the overall soil level. So that's one of the most important ones. So as I said, levels range from 1 to 16. And this level will influence the base health and damage resist of your soil. 
So at level 1, the base health will be 64 and the base damage resist will be 0. And at level 16, the base health will be 255 and the base damage resist will be 50. So every time you harvest a crop, the health of the soil will actually go down. So for example, this plot right here is at 126. I'm gonna harvest these pumpkins. It's now at 125. And these again, and it's now at 124. One thing you'll notice pretty quickly, however, is that even though every time you harvest, the soil may only lose one or two points of health, Especially with these crops like pumpkins and pineapples and everything that can be harvested multiple times, the health will go down pretty quickly. And let me show you what happens when the health is at zero. I'm just gonna go on a different farm dragon. So I'm gonna bring the health down to zero. So this one is at 24, so I'm gonna harvest these. Now it's at 16, eight. I'm gonna harvest this one. And as you can see, it just disappeared. So usually you should be able, if it's healthy, you should be able to harvest pineapples over and over again. However, if the health is at zero, when you harvest it, it will just die. And the way to prevent this is pretty much the same way as for the HP of the crop. So you can use wither grass or corn or four leaf clovers and you just till them like this. And once again, this can go all the way up to 255. Even if the base health is lower than that, for example, as I said earlier, at level one, the base health is 64, but you can still use items and recover it all the way up to 255. And the other stat is damage resist. And damage resist doesn't go down when you harvest crops. It actually only goes down during typhoons and snowstorms. So if you've got a typhoon or snowstorm coming, usually the villagers will talk about it so you can prepare a little bit beforehand. So the base for this will range from 0 to 50 depending on the overall soil level. However, if you use a wettable powder, you, you can bring this up all the way to 63. And usually in order to survive a typhoon or snowstorm, I like to have it over at least over 30 or 40 because it can go down quite a lot. So just make sure, especially for crops that take a long time to grow like pineapples or fruit trees, that they have a lot of damage resist before a storm. Also, one thing I should have mentioned earlier is that nutrients will also reduce the health of the soil. So you can use one nutrient a day safely on your crops. So for example, this one, the health is at 16 and damage resist is at 18. I'm gonna use one powder on it. And the health is still at 16, damage resist is at 50. But if I use a second nutrient on it, now the health is at 4, damage resist is at 63. So if you use a lot of nutrients, just make sure you keep an eye on the health of the soil. So once again, you can use weathered grass, corn, or four leaf clovers to restore it. So yeah, just keep an eye on the health and damage resist to make sure that your plants survive. One last thing I would like to specify for health and damage resist. So of course you can use items to recover these stats. However, they will also recover naturally if there is nothing planted on the soil. They will go back up to their base stats. Obviously, if they're over their base stats already. So for example, if you put the health to 255 and damage resist to 63, they won't go down. But if they are lower than their base value, then they will go up naturally a little bit every day. So I know one thing some people do is that they will use, for example, half of their field and they will harvest everything and then they will let their soil rest. So it goes back to the base values and then they will use the other half of their soil. So that's something you can do. But for me personally, I would just rather use like four leaf clovers and wettable powder because I find it a little bit more convenient, but it's really up to you. But just keep in mind that if you want health and damage resist to recover naturally, you need the plot to be empty. Now let's talk about speed. So there's the speed level, which will affect the base growth speed. So at level one, growth speed will be at 1.0 and at level 16, growth speed will be at 3.9. However, if you use items, so there's formula A, B, and C, each one being a little bit stronger than the previous one, you can actually bring this stat up to 5.0 for the growth speed. So for example, I'm gonna use it right here. I'm now at 3.0 and one more and I'm at 5.0. So the crops on these little plot will grow very quickly. And one thing that's true for the growth speed as well as quality plus, size plus and number plus, just like for the health, it will actually go down every time you harvest something. So currently my growth speed is at 5.0. 
And I'm gonna pick up these strawberries and now it's at 4.9 so it actually went down. However, contrary to health, even if there are things planted, these stats will always try to recover to their base value and that goes both ways. So if you harvested a lot of things and their growth speed went down a lot, for example, you can see here it's actually at 0.9 so it's lower than 1. Actually, I think the minimum is 0.5. So if I let it rest, it will go back to the base speed, which for this one, it's gonna be 1.0. But if you use nutrients to boost the stats, it will also go down, no matter if you harvest the crops or not, it will go down to their base value. So let's just come back tomorrow and check these. All right, so it's now two days later, and as you can see, the growth speed for this one went down from 4.9 to 4.8, so it is slowly going down. And this one went back up from 0.9, to 1.0 but if I harvest my cucumbers it goes back down to 0 0.9 all right so the next one is quality so the quality level will influence the base stat of quality plus so at level 1 the base will be 0 but at level 16 it will be 1.0 and the higher the quality plus is the faster it will be for a crop to level up so as I showed you with my orange tree earlier it is possible to plant a seed of a certain level and over time, if the quality plus stat is high enough, that crop will actually level up. But we're gonna do some testing. So I'm gonna plant a few things in here. As you can see, the quality is already at 0.03 because the quality on this plot is level three. So it will be a little bit faster and I'm gonna plant some level two yams and also have a level four potato and a level one eggplant. So to increase the quality, you can use a Greenifier or Greenifier Plus. So I'm gonna use the Greenifier Plus, it's a little bit more effective. And even though the maximum base stat for Quality Plus is 1.0, using the Greenifier Plus, you can actually bring it all the way up to two, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So it's at two. And also since there's a Typhoon today, I'm gonna to make sure to use Wettable Potter, otherwise they likely will not survive. So I'm gonna bring the damage resist to 63. And the health is pretty low as well, so I'm just gonna till one corn here. And they're doing a little bit better now, so let's keep an eye on these and see if I can increase their level. Alright, so it's now the next day and my field is looking very messy because of the typhoon. But these crops are doing good. As you can see, the damage resist went down from 63 to 55. And my yam actually went from level 2 to level 4. My eggplant is now level 3 and my potato is level 6. So what I want to show you is that my potato, was it level 4 or level 5 at first? I'm not too sure, but if I harvest it now, I'm going to be able to get a level 7 seed. So if you're trying to get all of your seeds to level 10 very quickly, that's one way you can do it. Just use Greenifier Plus and bring the quality to plus two. And then that way you can skip some levels and it's gonna be a lot faster. Just keep in mind, if you want to level them up all the way to level 10 using just the Greenifiers, that's gonna take a long time. But if you let them level up one or twice and then you cut it, you get the seed and then you plant them again and you do the same thing, all the way to level 10, it's actually gonna be pretty quick. Let's just do it one more day, uh, just out of curiosity, and see if I can get my yams to level up one more time. It's the next day, my yams are still level four, but they are ready to harvest. So I would just harvest them and get the level five seeds. Oh, actually I got level six seeds. So actually I am a little bit surprised. As you can see, this game doesn't tell you everything in detail but I think maybe they were actually closer to level five than level four and somehow I got level six seeds. So considering that I planted the level two seeds just two days ago and now I'm already at level six, you can really get to level 10 very, very quickly. So that's pretty much it for the quality. Now let's talk about size. So you probably understand the pattern now. So size level will influence the size plus base stat. So at size level 1, the base size plus will be 0. But at size level 16, the base size plus will be 1.0. But using nutrients, this can be brought up all the way up to 2. So let's try to make some giant crops. So every crop in this game has a giant version of it. And they're a lot more valuable. And in order to get giant crops, you need to plant 4 of the same crops in one little plot. 
So you need to make sure that they're all in the same spot. So for example, I've got four pumpkins here. So that's an ideal candidate for giant crops. As you can see right now, my size plus stat is at 0.03. It would take some time before they get giant, but they would eventually get there. However, using giantizer, you can speed up the process quite a bit. So as I said, the maximum with nutrients is 2.0. So I will bring the size up to 2.0 like this and now the health is super low and once i have giant pumpkins i want to be able to keep them for a long time so i'll just put this here and recover some of the health so now we're at 110 so we should be good so it's the next day and as you can see my pumpkins are getting bigger but they're not giant yet if i were to harvest one of these pumpkins it would just give me a regular pumpkin. So once you see that your crops start getting big, don't harvest them quite yet. You just need to be a little bit more patient. And keep in mind that if you have monsters working on your farm at 3 p.m., they will harvest all of your crops and they don't care whether you want to make a giant crop or not. So make sure you place them in an area of your field where monsters are not working. And one day later, you can see that my pumpkin is now giant. So the higher your size plus stat is, the faster it's going to be. So it only took two days in this case, but that's because my size plus stat is very high. So if it's lower, it might take some more time. And if I harvest it, I'm going to get some huge pumpkins. And since pumpkins are multi-harvest crap, I can just leave it like this. And as long as it's healthy, I'll be able to harvest giant pumpkins over and over again. However, I could understand sometimes you don't want giant crops and you want to go back to the regular. So there's an item called the minimizer and this one will reduce this size plus stat. However, one thing to keep in mind is that if you have a giant crop, it's not going to change the size of this crop. It's only going to change the stat. So for the next crops that I grow on this plot, they're not going to become giant automatically. So you can actually bring the size plus all the way down to minus two. But honestly, there's no reason to have it in the negative because there's no minuscule versions of the crops. There's only two sizes, the regular size and the giant size. So as you can see right now, my size plus is at minus two. But that pumpkin is never going to change size. So if I want a small one, I would need to cut it and then grow other pumpkins. And I would get actually not small pumpkins, but just regular pumpkins. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for size. And also the minimizer will recover some health. So it may not be the most efficient way to recover health, but that's something good to keep in mind. So for example, here the health is at 224. I'm gonna put some minimizer and it's now back to 255. The last stat we need to look at is number. So at number level one, the base number plus will be zero. And at number level 16, it will be 1.0. However, unfortunately, there is no nutrients that affect number plus. That's something you have to change with crystals. And as this video is getting pretty lengthy, this will have to be in part two, where I will cover all of the different farm dragons and the crystals you can use and how you can find the crystals. So stay tuned for that in the next few days. But basically what the number plus stat does is that it increases the yield of your crops. So just like for quality plus and size plus, as long as this number stays above zero, you will see some benefits eventually. You might have to be patient, but eventually you'll get some benefits. So for example, this strawberry right here, you can see that number plus is at 0.05 and they're gonna yield seven strawberries. And the default yield for strawberries is six. So that's a pretty important stat to keep in mind if you wanna have bigger harvest. And now there's just one last little thing I would like to talk about today, and that is the fertilizer bin. So the game doesn't tell you much about how it works. It just says I should put weeds and grass in the fertilizer bin to keep my fields healthy. And that's not very clear, but actually what it does if you have grass in it, uh, so you can put any types of grass, so you can have the green grass or the little withered grass, as well as even the medicinal herbs and the colored grass and all of these grass will work. Just keep in mind, so if you interact with the fertilizer bin and you select toss in all weeds and withered grass on hand, it's just gonna put the green grass and the withered grass. It will not put automatically 
the other ones like the medicinal herb because the game assumes you might want to keep them for crafting so you'll have to put these manually and keep in mind that the more fields you have so the more farm dragons you have the more grass it will consume every day but basically what the fertilizer does is that it accelerates the recovery of your fields so as i said earlier right every time you harvest something the growth speed quality plus size plus and number plus will go back down to zero and then if you don't harvest your crops they will slowly go back to their base value but if you have grass in your fertilizer bin they will go back to their base value a little bit quicker and that's the same for health and damage resist however just remember that for health and damage resist there needs to be nothing planted on your soil if you want them to recover. So this covers pretty much all of the basics regarding the stats and the nutrients. If you just started playing Rune Factory and you were confused with all of that, even me actually, I was confused with all of these stats and I played for a long time just ignoring all of this. However, it's a lot more pleasant when you actually understand what is going on. So I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions and I know it can still be a bit confusing even after watching this video, but I hope I made it a little bit easier. So stay tuned for the next parts of this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Rune Factory 5 content like this and I'll see you all in the next video.